In the previous video we saw that if a graph G is Hamiltonian, which means that it has a Hamilton cycle, then for every non-empty subset of vertices of the graph, the number of connected components of the graph without that vertex set S is less than or equal to the size of the set S. So what we're going to do in this video is take a look at an example where we can use this little lemma to show a, an example of a graph which is not Hamiltonian. So I've prepared the example here. So take a look at this graph. What we can do is we can say, well, if it's Hamiltonian, then it must satisfy this condition. So if we can show that this condition is not satisfied, then there must be no Hamilton cycle of the graph. So what does that mean? It means we are going to look for a set, which is non-empty, a set of vertices, so that when we remove that set of vertices from the graph, the number of connected components is actually more than the size of the set. So what we're looking for is a set S. We want a set S that's not empty. And if we remove it from the graph, and we get more components than the number of vertices that we removed, then G is non-Hamiltonian. Non-Hamiltonian. So in other words, if there exists, if there exists an S, actually I don't need to write S, if there exists this S with this property, then we know the graph is non-Hamiltonian. So take a look at this graph, maybe pause the video and take a good look at it. See if you can find the set S that will do this for you. All right, well now I'm going to take a look and show you. If you look at this vertex right here and this vertex right here, and you let that be the set S, what happens when you remove it? Well, remove that and remove that, and we're left with three connected components. Here it is, one, two, and three. So we can take S, let me just call this one U and V. We can take S equal to the set U, V, and then we can see that the number of components of G without this set S is three, but the size of S is two. So using this particular set S, we can show that this graph is not a Hamilton graph. So there's no Hamilton cycle of this graph. It's also not difficult to show that this graph is actually bipartite and its two partite sets have the same size. And I remember we did in a video, we showed that if a complete bipartite graph has the same size partite sets, then we have a Hamilton graph. But in this case, it's not a complete bipartite graph. So keep that in mind when you check. So this condition up here is called a necessary condition because if the graph is Hamiltonian, then the condition is necessary. If that condition is not satisfied, you can show it's non-Hamiltonian. But the condition is not sufficient for the existence of a Hamilton cycle. In other words, even if this condition is satisfied in the graph, it does not guarantee the existence of a Hamilton cycle. And so I want to show an example of that. And that actually is the Peterson graph. So it's not too hard to show that the Peterson graph satisfies the condition that for all sets of vertices which are not empty, if we remove that set of vertices from the graph and count the number of components that remain, it's always going to be at most the number of vertices that we removed. So you can do this just by checking all of the options for removing only one vertex. Well, that's clearly not going to disconnect the graph. And you can take a look at two vertices, three vertices, etc. And you can use the symmetry of the graph to see this. However, it has no Hamilton cycle. So it is non-Hamiltonian. And in fact, we haven't shown this yet in a video. I asked you in a previous video to show that the Peterson graph is not a Hamilton graph. It does not have a Hamilton cycle. And in a future video, I will give a proof, or maybe even more than one type of proof, for why this is the case.